Okay, you guys, so here we go. We're gonna start out with the cereal box. And I have used um, boxes of snacks to make earrings before. And what led me to think about using this box per se is nothing different other than the fact it's cardboard. I was gonna use a gift bag and I was gonna do earrings using the gift bag. But what ended up happening was my husband threw it away. <laughs> so I didn't get to um, to grab it before he threw it away because it was in the garage with some stuff that looked like it was trash. So I was like, dang on it. So I've just cut out two circles. I've traced two circles. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut off the bottom just so in case we need that section down there because you can make tons of earrings out of that, right? So. I don't want to promote any specific brand, so I'm just gonna cut the circles without promoting the box that we're using or anything like that. So, because I don't know, you can get in trouble doing stuff like that. And they ain't paying us right. <laughs> so let's cut out the circles. And what these are gonna be, I want them to really be a really pretty statement earring, but because I want to add stuff to them, I want them to be kind of light. So I have an idea in mind and I don't have an idea in mind. I think I'm gonna try to draw it out and show you what I'm hoping to make and then try to work our way through it looking like that. So just gonna end it up, end up, end it up, end up cutting out your circles that way. And then I'm just gonna cut off the excess over there. And then what we can do is after we cut the circles out is we can make sure they're even by just holding them together. We're probably gonna cut these in half anyway. At least in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. So let's see. And you can always skip past this part if you want to. This is just where we're cutting out the base for the design. So now let's hold them up against to, against each other. I was gonna say against to one another. What am I talking about today? God bless it. I have a lot on my mind, so I think my mind is going ahead of my mouth. <laughs> and my mouth is trying to play catch up. So we cut that off. So they're pretty much the same. And now what I want the design to look like, I'm gonna draw, I don't wanna draw it inside the, um, on my paper because I want my paper to stay white as we're going through this. So I technically want like a semi-circle type earring. And we've seen something like this before, I'm sure, at the store. And then I want like a circle here. And then I want like some confetti type stuff here, which normally you could use it as a ribbon, but I want it to be like paper fringe. And then like a mirror right here and then the earring hanging. So that's kind of how I want it to look. Not exactly sure it's going to look that way. So what that would mean is that we cut this one in half. Let's just hope I match them up. I'm not measuring in any way, but we could always, of course, you know, make any adjustments that we need to. That's pretty close. So that's actually close enough. I think I'm gonna take just a little bit off, just so. I have an insurance boot camp I have to attend today. It's online. So I'm gonna get that done. So that's our half piece right here. So then the other thing that we're gonna need is a smaller circle here. So this circle, it actually could be two pair earrings, but I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to make two pairs, so I don't wanna commit to that. So we're gonna need two smaller circles, but we also need the fringe part that goes down here. So let's figure that out, because what I want is to be able to like cut lines and stuff like that. So what we could do, and we're gonna wanna glue it to the base, but we want the earring also to stay as light as possible. So I'm just cutting enough to go to the edge of the earring to 
where it looks like that. And then I'm just gonna make a matching cut with this one. And we're gonna need some really sharp scissors to get the fringe that we want. I haven't decided on the paint colors yet, because of course you know we're gonna paint it. So we're just making our pieces, okay? So we just get the matched up piece of base for the fringy part. And this is really therapeutic, just cutting up stuff, right? I'm just trying to make it a little bit more straight. Oh, not that it'll matter. Anyway, so let's move all that over there. So this is what we have. This is what it looks like. I'll turn the color over so you can, it'll probably make more sense if I have it that way. So we have that, we have that. And then what's gonna happen is this is gonna be fringed or tapered, which I could have brought it around this way and made it a little bit longer. I'm trying to think if we wanna do that. So then it'll be able to fray it out that way. Let me think. Again, you can always skip past this. You don't have to stay with me while I figure this whole thing out. But I was trying to decide if I want yeah, I think I want a bigger square. So we can keep these for something else, but I definitely feel like I want a larger square. So let's do that. Because I want to be able to have enough fringe on the side and stuff like that too, so. So it goes out that way, okay. Thank God it's just cardboard. And you have plenty of this laying around. You have cereal boxes, cheese it boxes, and all that jazz in your house. You have plenty. So let's cut this top part off. And again, I haven't made these before, so that's why we're trying to figure this out together. But you're basically just making the template now. What you could do is create a template and leave it to the side so you can always make these again if you want to. So let's hold that over there again. So that's what I want. I want to be able to make starburst type things, but fringe basically. So we're going to use the smaller cardboard piece as our template. Okay. And then I'm not sure about the colors. I'm trying to decide. I kind of want them to be multicolored. I don't know. So they're real colorful because I was kind of inspired by a Mexican or Native American design. I forget what it's called. I kept trying to Google it and find it so I could share it with you, but I couldn't find it. So let's, let's do that like that because I'm trying to basically even these up. So that's that. This is what it's going to be looking like. And this is the bottom part to the earring. So now what we need is a smaller circle on the top part where it fits like right around there like an hourglass type thing. I wonder if we could do half circles that way and glue them that way. And then we wouldn't have to worry about cutting any more circles. Let's see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, because we want like a semicircle to go right here where the mirror is gonna go, if I cut that in half, that'll kind of give me that look where I can put my semicircle right there and we can have the fringe. So let's do that. So we're basically just gonna use this piece as a template to cut it straight down the middle. I don't know how I come up with this stuff, y'all. Just see it in my head and it becomes what it is. 
pretty cool. Oh, maybe it's this way because that seems a little wide. Let's see. May have to adjust the size a little bit. Good. So that came out really perfect. So. I'm gonna grab the mirror so you can kind of see what we're talking about. We're just putting a template together and then we'll start painting and putting stuff together and cutting the fringe and all that stuff. I'm probably gonna paint the cardboard first so that I'm gonna turn the camera around. So that's actually the top of the arrow, so let's turn it around this way. And the reason I want to paint it before we fringe it out and everything else is because then we don't have to be worried about trying to paint the fringe. You could do this with magic markers too. These are mirrors. I forget where I got them from. I feel like I got them in the floral section at Michael's, and I think I shared that before in a whole other video. And these, I think they go in floral designs or something like that. So this will probably be, not probably, this will be the heaviest part of the earrings. So this is what it'll look like when it's all put together. So they're gonna be pretty girthy size earrings, but they won't be heavy because the only heavy piece is gonna be the mirror. Uh, that's going to be all fringed out. These are going to be different colors. We're going to poke holes in the top for them to hang as earrings and that's going to be that. So what I need to go decide on is colors. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do some blacks, but I'm thinking I'm just going to do a whole bunch of mix of colors so they look like just a real bright artsy design. And then we're going to go from there. So I got the paints that we had still left over from the Halloween earrings because I was like, why not? You know, we're doing mixed media kind of colors. So let's just use what we already have versus mixing up any more paints because we have plenty. So we're going to sit the mirrors to the side grab some water and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint let's start with the cardboard I'm just gonna sit those up there so we don't forget how we put them together and probably should match those up a little bit because I have like a little ribbing or something that the other one doesn't have so I don't want that Let's just start painting. So, y'all, I have this thing for this salmon color. I don't know. So, we're just gonna do the salmon color, and then we're gonna just gonna dot the brush off. We're not even gonna try to go get any water or anything like that. Let's just put it over here to the side. And we're just doing smatherings, okay? I know that's not a technical term. specific way that I'm doing the colors. Just going with kind of what I'm looking at on the um, on the plate over here. They have a little coagulated spot. Okay. And we're just gonna go through Up. 
Now keep in mind, some of this is gonna be covered up. So. Because you know, when we go to fringe it out, it's not gonna show. Bless you. So you'll notice that it's starting to curl up just a little bit, but that's because it's paper, right? So what you'll want to do also is we're going to have to decide on the base color for these. And I honestly feel like I want my base color, I don't know, to be like a black and a white maybe? I'm not sure. Let's see. Ooh, we can't do black and white. That's just not going to be cute. Let's just do the same multicolor. Try to perfectly match it up, just same color families. We get a yellow, we get a green, we get a pink, we get a green, get some white. We did right up here. We did. mix them too much they're going to be gray right and brown so you know, make sure you wipe your brush off so we got purple and then we have some of this teal over here kind of low just stay with me pretty okay so again we're just making art pieces so they don't all have to match look how pretty that is that's gonna be your fringe it's like a card I mean you can actually leave them like this <clears throat> and, and leave them like that to be really pretty I'm just putting this yellow over the black so we can flatten those out once they dry and then this is going to be the base color of the top of the earring, remember, at the top. So let's just put some more color smatherings on here. And this is going to be the piece that the bottom is hidden behind the square piece where the fringe is going to go. And if you want it, you could leave some of the back of the box showing. I'm not going to do that. The cereal box itself. I mean, because even that provides color, but we're not doing that. But you can, and I think it would be pretty. I don't think it really matters. Okay, that's pretty. 
pretty. Just sitting it up there. And then one more we have to match up. purple and over here we have some more yellow and we're going to do a pink across So we gotta let all that dry because it's pretty thick, the colors that we have going on. And then I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. I mean, but imagine how pretty this would be if you wanted to turn this into like a piece of art, you could just do some smatterings of paint across here. You could frame this. How pretty would that be? It's just some wall art. We might try that one day. I might, I don't know, let's do, let's do something with it. Since we're already here working on it, we have all this paint out here anyway that at some point, it's gonna to be too dry for us to work with. It's just brush strokes. Lord, I just got some paint on the table. I'm trying to go tell him. Whatever price. Because there was paint still on my palette from the other day when we made the Halloween earrings. And then you could iron this, right, to get it, of course, you wait until it dries and iron the back of it, not the front of it. I don't want anybody telling me they ruined their iron, right? You would iron the back of it. And you probably would use a brown paper bag to do that. Um, not iron directly on the paper, just get a brown paper bag. But this is really pretty. I decided to let black kind of be the dominant color because I like how that kind of jumped out there and stood out. And I'm going to get a frame from the Dollar Tree and see how cute we can make this once it dries. Because we had always, when we moved in, we're like, we should do art, you know, for our own wall at home versus buying a bunch of art, but we hadn't done that yet. Oh, let me get this paint off the table before it dries. I like to get my sleeve in it. <laughs> or my little thrift store sweater. Okay, so. Oh. Yeah, some orange up here. You guys, I want you to try this because imagine that people will want original art for their offices. You know, people that are redecorating their offices, doing she sheds and things like that. Why not? Why not your art? Because art is subjective, correct? It's whatever we believe is art. So I'm going to make sure we cover all the edges up. And then I'll clean the table off so I'll get in trouble. Let my lamb chop. And it's just wood. This stuff is not, I mean, this is acrylic paint, so I'm white right up. So, as long as I ain't drilling holes in the table, we're doing good. Because y'all see holes, that's because this used to be my craft table at our other house. Well, it's my dining room table, too, but I mean, how many of us craft in our dining room, kitchen, all that jazz? Okay. Pretty. 
And if you wanted it to have some texture, you could just let the little pieces that pop up or stay up, you could do that. My uncle, he was really my godfather, but he was close to my parents, um, lived in DC, and he was an um, art instructor at UDC. I think it's the University of the District of Columbia. And when he died, he had the most incredible art collection. And um, I'm hoping that it was able to be donated when my aunt passed away. That was a whole other story of how a lot of stuff happened with that. But he had an incredible art collection. His name was Chuck Young, so if you get a chance to Google him. But he was a mixed media artist. And he got sick and passed away from lung cancer. So you really have to be careful when you're using art products and things like that. Um, because I think part of that was because he was not in a well-ventilated area. You know, people can be hard-headed, and especially older people. Right? <laughs> and, you know, just painting in his basement, I feel like the fumes were just a lot down there because they live um, in Rock Creek Park in D.C. And his basement wasn't well-ventilated. So that's my take, and my, I'm not a doctor. But anyway, look how pretty that is, so... I'm gonna go and add a little bit more of the, I like the beige color that we're popping in here just to break it up and give it some lightness. I wasn't gonna make anything today and I know we're supposed to be making earrings, but hey, you guys, they're drying. So, I'm entertaining myself at this moment. But I do have to get this table cleaned up before paint dries. So you should do this with me. I want you to share with me what you created from your extra paint, because we were gonna throw this away anyway, right? I mean, because once it dries, you can't keep using it anymore. So let's just do some graffiti art. I love it. And I feel like this is gonna make something really pretty. Bob Ross, but I'm a girl in the price, right? <laughs> Insert your name in there wherever you want it to go. So that's really pretty. I love it. So I'm just gonna set that over there to dry and get all this mess cleaned up. I created and we'll okay, be so it's my first mixed media art piece, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna mat it and frame it, but I am. I figure out I can do that myself. And I think I might be on to something, <laughs> in my opinion, right? God bless you guys. God, so, I forgot that you haven't even seen these since they were painted. So, um, I'm going to insert a picture here so you can see what they look like as I... ...put them together in template form so I know how to put them back together, <laughs> right? So, here's what they look like painted. They came out really pretty. And then here are the base pieces, gorgeous. Just painted the backs and they look really great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue them together. I haven't put the holes in for the earrings yet. Technically, I don't need a drill for that. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I was running up down the stairs, right? I told my husband, like, if I work out and exercise, how is it I'm still out of breath going up and down these stairs? <laughs> but it is two flights of stairs in the house. So I'm gonna put some glue here on the bottom. I'm just gonna squeeze that down. I probably should make sure the whole thing has some, just in case. That went way over further than I wanted it to go. That smattering of glue, so I'm gonna have to go wipe that off. Let me get that off of there which we are gonna, um, that's the word I'm looking for. We're probably gonna use the dimensional magic on here, I'm not sure. So, wanna make sure it's even because remember, we're gonna cut these and have like a little fringe area. So it kinda doesn't matter that I got glue over there because all this is gonna be cut and look like um, fringe type stuff anyway. So then with the piece on the top, I want to glue it to the back this way. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue across 
the top here. Just a second, folks. I gotta go let that all in. So I put glue back there. And we're gluing it this way because remember we want that to kind of sit up like that. So I'm gonna press it down. it's positioned where I want it and that it's even with the top of the other semicircle. Just a second because you want the circle edges to be matched up, okay? Okay, so then I'm just gonna lay it down and make sure. Just a second, folks. And then I'm gonna get just a quick little paintbrush to take that excess glue off of there that I don't want, okay? Keeping in mind, again, we're gonna put the Dimensional Magic over this anyway, so that's not gonna show. And we're gonna have the mirror here anyway. So I noticed that on the back, not as even as I want it, so hold on. So on the back, it may be a little slanted, but that's in order for me to get it even on the front. So that's gonna be what it's gonna be. And once we get it all decorated and designed, it won't matter, so cool. Okay, so let me go let the dog in. I feel like he's being my boss this morning. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna glue the other one. These are gonna be gorgeous. Okay, so I was able to make them even on the back and still be even on the front. So now we're gonna go glue the other one. We're gonna sit that one off to the side. So, yeah, the dog just wants to chase leaves this morning. Nothing wrong with that. He's just being a dog, right? So I'm gonna put some glue here so we can glue this one down. And I really don't need glue all the way across the base because this isn't going anywhere. This glue is really good, really excellent. So we're just gonna wipe off our excess there. And then we're gonna, again, put glue just across the top. That's probably more than I wanted. The extra came, oop, extra came out. So let's go on and close that up so we can keep control of the glue because it'll keep <clears throat> seeping itself out. So now, again, we're just gonna put that back there. We're gonna even it up like we did the last one. And then press it down. And what we wanna make sure is that these two are the same, okay? So I wanna look at them and make sure that this one isn't lower down than the other one. I wanna make sure it's even on the back. I'm gonna turn it around to you too, but I need to look at it for myself to make sure. What are we looking like up here? I wanna push it down a little bit more. Okay, and now let me just get, give me a second bolt and I'll let you out again. So I wanna get the excess glue off of here. want to adjust everything okay and make sure they're the same I think one's up a little high on this side I think this one's up a little higher on this side okay perfecto now we're gonna sit them to the side and let them dry. We'll leave them alone. Okay, so now we have glued everything down. We're looking gorgeous. And these things are so lightweight. So now what we're gonna do is, although I don't really have a plan, <laughs> we're just gonna start cutting. Cause remember I said we wanted them to be like a fringe. So I'm just gonna start from here. And 
what I may do is if I don't like, because I don't want them to be square, I want them to be rounded. So what I may do is like after we get them cut, fringed out like we want them, then I'm gonna go from there to um, maybe round it out. Because I don't want them to be prickly and pokely and all that. So I'm just cutting into them up to the point where they meet the, um, the half moon shape here. I think I want the fringe to be even thinner. So I may go in with thinner cuts. These are exacto scissors that I've had forever. So that's definitely the look, that's the look I'm going for. I just think I want them to be, some of them to be thinner. Like I feel like that one's too thick. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see it. Just trying to make sure I don't cut the wrong thing. Or cut one off by accident. And then keeping in mind, we gotta match them up with the other earring too. Awkward. <laughs> okay, so. Which I'm not gonna make that part perfect. I'm just gonna do what we like, do what I like, okay? Okay, so. That's really pretty. We have all that fringe right there, but I want them to have a semicircle effect. So I'm trying to figure out, because once I cut it, I can't go back, right? So let's cut from down here first. I'm gonna hold it up where I can see it, and then I'll hold it down where you can see it. So this is just me rounding it out to see. I'm gonna cut off as little as possible at first, okay? So I'm probably gonna take that, this off because I don't want those, I don't want any sharp edges. I want them to be round. And then we can go back after we get it like we want it. And like even that out. It looks like a little pocketbook, cute. So now I'm trying to figure out how to cut this side. So I'm gonna, it's probably gonna cover it up on the camera. But don't worry, I'll show it to you. Okay. So now I just need to get it matched up around here, okay? I still want them to have like some pretty good length to them. So all I'm doing is taking off the side over here that I noticed is um, was longer than the other side. So now what we're doing is we're just trying to get it like we want it shape-wise. Because I want it to be rounded out, okay? Pretty. And then they're gonna hang like that. So just gonna round them out a little bit more. I'm trying to think, it's probably gonna be kind of hard to get this part with the dimensional magic, so I'm probably just gonna do the semicircles, okay? But while we're off camera, I also glued on the mirror pieces, and so they're gonna be pretty big. They're gonna swing like that, okay? So my plan is not for them to have movement or anything on the fringe part, it's just for them to be fringed like a pair of old 70s bell bottoms, right? I don't know why that, why I said that, what that has to do with anything. <laughs> but it just reminds me of the 70s. I think that's the point I'm making. And you have to be careful when you're cutting any more fringe to make sure you don't cut any pieces off, okay? Because wouldn't that be a tragedy? So pretty. I love it. And the paper's pretty stiff because it's cardboard, okay? So now we've got that done, and now what I'm gonna do is use this one as a template for this one. So I think I'm gonna go ahead 
and cut cut it off and make it round and then fringe it out hopefully this works in my favor So, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the fringe for this one, and then be right back, okay? Okay, you guys, so now you just need your earring bindings. We're going to talk about what I did to the earrings right quick. Super excited that we finished them up. Look how gorgeous they are. So, so pretty. So, what I did was I used the Dimensional Magic around the top portions but I just left the bottom part matte fringed because I liked it that way so now we're gonna put our earring hooks on and let me turn it around so you can see it so look how gorgeous they are so of course I cleaned the mirrors how pretty are those I love them I love how they turned out let's put the hooks on and try them on so, you can so we talked about this a lot and it could be opinion based but I believe that in order for your earrings to hang properly sorry about that guys the sun is coming up in my window so I believe in order for them to hang properly you should have two jump rings And then that way they'll hang face in the right direction. If you've ever fought with jump rings, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> so rather than having to bend and twist your hook to make it be right, you can just put two jump rings on, which should make it fall properly. See what I mean? So that way it just swings and goes in like a circular motion so it has movement versus if we just had one jump ring, you'd be fighting to twist it around and do everything that it needs to do to have the proper movement. Where, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing more irritating than your earring flipping around and the back of it showing when you want the front of it to show how pretty it is. So these are definitely statement earrings. I think they came out so beautiful. So we're just putting the ring in. And I, I did use the drill to put the hole in the paper, but it wasn't necessary. Certainly if you have a hole punch, or um, just a little tool that you can poke a hole with. You can do that. I just wanted a cleaner looking hole for the earring finding. So we're just putting the last hook on here. I think these are gorgeous. And what a perfect way to use cereal boxes and things like that. I'm gonna close the, um, let me close the blinds so you can see these well. So look, oh my gosh, they are just beautiful love them they're so big they probably don't even want to sit side by side i think they are incredibly gorgeous i'm gonna put them on keep in mind my hair does not look great so i'm probably not gonna show my face well it's not that my hair doesn't look great i haven't done my hair yet so they're lightweight of course the mirror adds some weight but i have okay you guys so look how they hang as earrings they are incredibly beautiful and people are gonna be asking you where you got them from. People always ask me, do I make my earrings? Like, where'd you get those earrings from? Did you make them? I'm like, yep. I don't say yep, I say yes I did. And they are so gorgeous. Next project.